Hey, this is Vu, and do you belong in LEM? No, because you're in silver. But does Dreeks belong in LEM is the question that he posed to me. He said he's not sure he belongs. Maybe he deserves a D rank. So I want to go over some of the common mistakes he's making, as well as the idea of people getting scared to play because they're thinking they're going to D rank when they rank up into certain ranks. But first, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, Leadify. Leadify is an AI coach which allows you to improve faster by analyzing your face it or matchmaking games and giving you insight into your weaknesses with personalized training and it tracks your progression as well. Whether you're trying to rank out of silver, prove to your friends you're in elo hell, or you're my family trying to organize an intervention and get me to quit CS, Leadify is the app for you. It's also free to try, so give a click to the link in the description and try it out for free at leadify.com. So we'll take a look here at Dreeks, who does some things right and quite a few things poorly, as you might expect. And on Pistol Round, he's gonna make one of the more common mistakes that I continuously see. This is just too common of a mistake for me not to actually address it. So as he makes his way over to middle, you might notice the movement doesn't look quite right. You might not know why, and if you do know why, then congrats to you, but if we zoom out on what that looks like, he just ran an essential straight line down middle. Now, he wasn't, as I've said in other videos, just holding W straight into a player, but he was running a straight line. And when you're looking at pistol rounds, you're really looking at rounds where you're essentially a floating head. Unless you have no armor and your opponents accidentally hit you in the body and find that out by the blood showing, you really aren't going to worry about getting hit in the body. So what happens in these rounds is you're basically subconsciously deciding based on their pathing where their head is gonna be in a quarter of a second and you're, you're flicking over to where it's going to be. And that means when you're running in a straight line, it's incredibly easy for someone to adjust to that. They're going to hit you very easily. Instead, if you're moving like a clown back, forth, up and down, they're not gonna be able to predict where you're gonna be. So they're constantly gonna flick off of your head to the wrong areas and you make it incredibly tough for them to actually kill you. That's the way you want to be moving in pistol round. Now, that being said, if you're trying to go from point A to point B, you do need to actually move kind of in a straight line, but doing things like jumping around corners, you know, if you've seen Vitality, they run backwards with their head looking at the ground. I'm not sure if you want to do that, but go for it. You know, that type of thing can be very beneficial instead of just running in a straight line directly at your opponent. So following that, he's going to have a pretty effective round, really. He's, his movement, again, is not going to be great as he makes his way onto site either, but there's nothing too bad about this round, and he actually laser beams that guy on ramp. That guy would be tilted for sure. And then, you know, he takes a few shots to kill the guy on plat, sprays his Glock a little bit more than you should. Usually you want to kind of take your time a little bit because if you miss once, you're going to miss a whole bunch. As he plays out the 3v1, the one thing to keep in mind is you don't necessarily want to play pistol 3v1s quite the way you would play a rifle 3v1 or 2v1. Raid frag work much more effectively when you have guaranteed kills with a rifle as opposed to these pistol round situations where someone can kind of jiggle one tap you and then you don't really have a chance to trade where Whereas with a rifle, you'd tag them in the body and it would be tough for them to unpeak out of it. So if we skip ahead a few rounds to round number four, which is the first real gun round, there's a very real, very quick learning opportunity in this round. So he's going to make his way quickly over to lower. And you do have to worry about people going into lower if you don't have an opper watching the lower cross. However, they do have an opper watching that, even though he's an anchor. And Drake's is fairly safe here. He doesn't fully trust his teammate and I respect that. He still clears the angles out and that's probably not not a bad idea. What is a bad idea is walking directly into this angle and trying to go for that peak. Now, you can try to peek into offers sometimes. However, if you're peeking into an angle that they're definitely holding, especially if it's a crack peak angle, you're definitely dying. Following that, he knows this player's close right. There's a very easy Molotov and spam through the doors you can do to get a free kill here. So you really want to know that if you can, but still, this guy's going to end up dying regardless. Following that, Dreeks is going to jump up on a cat here, and this is the learning moment. You can actually jump up on a cat 
fully safely if you do it correctly. So what you want to be doing is looking down at the ground and double jumping up to make sure that you don't fully land on the first wood box as you jump up. And that way you're going to get on top of Xbox without them actually even seeing you. And then you can scrape across, stand up and get a free kill on anyone playing an angle like this. Now, of course, you couldn't have known he was here initially, but it's still a very safe and smart way to do things if you think it's likely and you've already killed the close mid player anyways. Given the topic of the video, and in the interest of being fair, we're going to go to round six here where I think he does some things very effectively. So he's going to get an op here, and unfortunately he's a bit late, so he doesn't actually see the cross to learn only one player cross, which would have been quite nice. However, holding the cross when your team is going B is a pretty natural and effective thing, and you can catch rotates if the sight take goes well. Now the sight take goes poorly, otherwise I really would have supported him holding and trying to catch people doing things like rotating off of cat. However, again, it went poorly, so he's gonna try and head over and support if he can and try and get something done. And this is a player, Dreeks here, who is very good in the micro, but in the macro he struggles, and I've seen quite a few mistakes from him, but this is gonna be quite nice. So he misses the initial shot, which is not a big deal, he goes back, grabs another kill, doesn't forget the player is trapped on the left, with a nice molly pushes him out of the corner and hits a nice shot there as well, then his teammate gets the kill and he quickly rotates into B here. Now, if he knows the player is CT and there's reason to suspect it, it's not a bad idea to just throw that smoke immediately, although it is a little bit dangerous. The one thing I would really recommend in this spot is that he picked up the AK that was on top of the close tons box. The reason that would be effective is because he knows now that they're on eco, and one of the ways you lose a round like this is you just missed an easy op shot, or he makes the op shot really hard by doing something like swinging on you close tunnels here, and you miss the shot, he grabs the op, and then he kills your teammate. Instead, if you have a rifle against a pistol, no armor, the odds of that type of thing happening go down drastically. So in late round scenarios, when you know your opponents are on pistols, usually having a rifle is going to be a more of a guarantee that things go well. But once he clears tunnels back out, it's not a big deal, and an op is certainly effective in this type of scenario. And at the end of the day, I think this guy might actually save here. And as I've mentioned before, you literally make more money from a bomb explosion across the team than this guy is saving in a P250. So when I say his micro is quite good, but his macro is quite bad, what that means generally is his mechanics are fairly on point, but his game sense and map awareness and those types of things are not. And this is a great round here to describe exactly that scenario. So he's gonna have a quite poor spot to head his way over to long and usually if your spawn is this bad you want to avoid going into doors right away because a lot of the time you're just going to get chunked by a nade or your teammate ahead of you is going to die and you're going to have to make your way back over to middle especially if it's not an absolute long rush following that this crouch out middle isn't actually very effective and his teammate is going to completely troll him by standing on his head which is unfortunate, but you're gonna see his micro is quite on point. He dodges that flash. He's gonna hit a one burst headshot onto the player here in middle, and then he's gonna make his way down. And this is fine. Not expecting another player to be mid is, you know, standard. However, once he makes contact with that player mid, he makes a very common mistake I see when I see players that are just getting into higher ranks. He's gonna jump up on the box here and then try and fight that opper. Now the problem that occurs there is that oftentimes what happens is your mechanics get quite good, you do tons of deathmatch and you really work on those aim mechanics, and then you get into games and you try and force gunfights. The problem is if you play against opponents that are competent and as you get higher and higher in the ranks, they're going to get more and more competent. You're going to be less able to just force terrible gunfights and win them anyways. And that causes people sometimes to rank up and then immediately rank down, or it causes them to be horribly inconsistent because they'll play one set of opponents who can't aim very well, or you know, your aim will just be highly on point for a game. And then the next game, maybe your aim isn't quite as on point. You're not able to hit those shots or your opponents can just kill you before you're actually able to get a shot off because you're putting yourself in such poor engagements. Repeaking on an opera when he knows where you are and then posting up is usually not going to work very well. But then again, we're going to see as he makes his way forward here, this Molotoy guy is going to peek out. He's going to get a very quick kill and then he's going to try and make his way quickly up towards the A site. So a very good micro decision and play in that way. However, as he gets his way up, 
up, instead of turning around and heading back to Cat when his teammate mollies it, as A site is very clear here, he's going to notice A site's fully clear now. He could make his way back to Cat, but the thing is, you have to clear something. You have to you have to actually clear something. You can't just sit here and hope that they're not coming long or hope that they're not coming cat. Now they have no control of anything because they've given up both sides and Dreeks is going to end up dying from long. Usually in these scenarios, you want to go back and hold on to cat as soon as you clear the bomb site because otherwise you're left in a situation that is almost unwinnable without getting lucky. And when you rely on getting lucky that your opponents aren't coming from the wrong direction at the wrong time, you are not going to be consistent. Before I give my final verdict, I want to take a look at one more round and I want to talk about a concept when it comes to improving, which is that your teammates don't actually matter. The outcome of the initial game that you're currently in doesn't really matter. It just matters that you're continually improving. So I'll focus on that in a second, but let's watch the round here first. Now, admittedly, his team is gonna do a very poor job of holding B for the majority of this half. He's eventually gonna play there, but on this round they come A, and he's gonna be going for a long peak. He had the best spawn, so going for a long peak with an AWP is very natural. You just wanna make sure you're running backwards to get to the corner so you don't get blinded by any stray flashes, and you wanna get there as quickly as possible. But what's a problem is he's going to fall back off of the corner here in a second despite having two players on cat meaning all he needs to do is secure long and let them do their thing in middle he's not really going to be able to help that instead he's back on this angle here now the problem with this is when they inevitably push his teammates off of cat because cat is really tough to hold in the long run and really not going to happen very often he is now going to be in a position where he can be shot from both directions and there's no safe space for him to get to to not actually die so not only that he gets himself on plat to try and be safe but he very easily could have just gotten traded if someone else had swung out catwalk and now he's still in a terrible spot he's got to aggress somewhere but he doesn't know it so he just kind of sits here on plat again fully open, could easily die from long at any moment here, and he's eventually going to get killed straight through a smoke by someone on cat here uh, in just a second. It's actually a ridiculous shot this guy lands. The concept is his teammates couldn't hold B very well this game, and it's easy for someone in this scenario where he's actually a top fragger in this game, he might come out of this game and blame it on his teammates that they couldn't hold B and be a little bit tilted about it. The important thing when it comes to improving at really any game you play is that you improve every single game. As long as you're continually getting better, the outcome of any specific game really doesn't actually matter. If you win a game when you weren't yet ready to rank up, the system is eventually going to gift you a loss by placing you against players significantly better than you thinking you're better than you are and if you lose a game when you are ready to rank up eventually it's going to put you against worse players and you're going to be gifted a win in the opposite manner the actual game you're specifically playing the outcome doesn't really mean anything the best way to get to global or to get to grandmaster or whatever top rank is in whatever game you're playing is to make sure that every single game you play you improve yourself in any way possible and that usually means doing everything to the best of your ability now do i think this player deserved lem he seems like an lem ish level player it's really hard to actually define what ranks are what depending on the region and people have good and bad games so it really isn't very easy to say but i would say he probably deserves it i think he did top frag this game as well but anyways thanks for watching and i hope this helped